This is a unit circle. And on this unit circle, the radius of the unit circle is one unit. So if I think about ordered pairs as x, y coordinates, from the origin to get out to this point is one unit long. So how would I describe the coordinate when I think about it as x, y? I go to the right one unit, and then I do not move up or down. Likewise, this point over here to the left. From the origin, I move one to the left, and then I don't go up or down. Now the coordinates on top and on the bottom are similar, but in this case we don't move to the left or to the right. So zero would be what we think of as the x value, and then I move one unit up to get to this point. And down below to get to this point, I don't move to the left or to the right from the origin. I go straight down one unit. As you get next year into pre-calculus, you're going to review what you learn in geometry about 45, 45 degree triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles in order to compute how do you mathematically come up with, what is the justification to come up with these points. Make sure all earbuds are out right now. Make sure all cell phones are put away. I'll give you a chance to do that. I'm going to teach you a trick to figure out how do we come up with these ordered pairs. So remember, when we see a coordinate point, like if I gave you, you don't have to do this, but if I give you a very simple Cartesian plane, an x, y axis, and I said to you, okay, how do I get to this point? You'd say, okay, you're going to go three to the left, or three to the right, and up one, and that's why we call this the point three one. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you knew that, right? So it's an eighth grade concept, ninth grade concept. So my question is, how do I get to this point? I have to go to the right how many, and then I have to go up how many? Or how do I get to this point, to the right how many? There is a trick to that. So once I teach you this trick, I'm going to show you how we can apply it to the other three quadrants. We're going to make a U-shape, and we're going to follow along the curve of the circle. And this U-shape is going to look like this. So I'm going to follow along the curve of the circle, and it's going to be an ugly capital U. It's going to look like this. And as I make that U, I'm going to count one, two, three, one, two, three. Now when you make a U, do you start on the left side or the right side to make the U? The left, right? Nobody makes a U like this, right? We start on the left and we go to the right. And so we're going to count one, two, three, one, two, three. And we're going to do that in the numerator of all of these fractions. So you're doing this along with me. One, two, three, one, two, three. So I just made this U going down and going back up. The denominators of every single one of these fractions will always be a 2 in these special common points on the unit circle. Now, the numerators are all going to take the square root of the numerator. And then we're going to say in our head, do we know the answer before I put it down? So before I put down the square root of 1, do we know what the square root of 1 is? Well, the square root of 1 is 1. So I don't need to write the square root of 1 because we know it's 1. Do we know the square root of 2? Not 2 squared. Do we know the square root of 2? We don't know the square root of 2. Yes, it exists, but the square root of 2 is it's irrational. It's ugly. So we're all, square root of 2. Do we know the square root of 3? No, it's also ugly. And if for those who are like, I'm really confused why she thinks the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 is ugly. And here's the reason why. Bless you. The square root of 1 is 1, but the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, they're not perfect squares. So they give us irrational numbers. The square root of 4 is pretty. The square root of 9 is pretty. What's the next pretty number that I can take the square root of? The square root of 16, the square root of 25, the square root of 36. How do we get those numbers? 1 squared, 2 times 2, 3 times 3. It doesn't mean that there's not a square root of 5, square root of 6, sorry, square root of 6, square root of 7, and so on. It doesn't mean that. It just means they're really ugly. And so if it's ugly, we want to leave it in radical form, okay? If we could simplify it, like the square root of 1 is 1, we did so. Now, here's the really cool part. You ready? Take your fingers right now. And we're going to think of these as placeholders. Put your pointer finger on this point. You do not have to do this on your paper. I'm going to do it on my paper. I'm going to take a black marker. Or actually, you know what? Let me do a colored marker so it stands out. I want to know, these are called special points. They're common points. I want to know what other three points on this unit circle are exactly this distance. Remember, distance is always positive. What other three points on this unit circle that have dots on the unit circle are exactly this distance to the special horizontal axis? Turn to your partner. I'm going to press pause, and I'm going to give you 30 seconds. All right. So 
For those that are in class, I said to you, I gave you an example. I said, if we took a piece of yarn and we measured this and I cut the yarn this distance and I asked myself, what other common points on this unit circle other than this point? And I'm going to take, if you have a highlighter right now, and I'm going to highlight this circle. What other points on the unit circle are exactly this distance? This would be one of them. Look at this. This distance is the same as this distance. Did everybody see that? It doesn't matter if you have to go down or up. Distance is positive. So if you have that highlighter, please highlight that point. Now there's two other places. By a raise of hands, if you think you know what they are, raise your hand, please. Okay, only about three or four of us. So if I took this piece of yarn and I was like, what other, oh, here's one. And down below, here's one. Now, how are they really similar? I want to show you right now. I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to use this exact same example. One, two, three, one, two, three. What's really similar about those four points? What's really similar about those four points, and what's different? Turn to your partner. Ready? Get set and go. In front of me, who can share with me, like, how are they similar, how are they different? Luis, can you tell me, how are they similar? They're the same distance, I agree, the same distance to where? I agree, this is the same distance, I like that concept, I didn't even think of that with first hour, I like that. Somebody else, how are they similar? Jackie, what do you think? They reflect on each other, I agree, they also reflect on each other, that's true too. Okay, if I said this point is 3, 1, this point would be 3, negative 1, this point would be negative 3, 1, and this point would be negative 3, negative 1. If I eliminated all the negative signs, do you agree that the numbers would be exactly the same? So the negative signs just tell me how do I get to a point. So this says positive 3, okay, I go to the right 3. Positive 1, I go up 1. Negative 3, I go left first, and then I go up. Negative negatives, I go left first, and then down. Positive negative says right first and then down. Does that make sense? But the numbers are exactly the same. We're going to flip to the front right now. I'm going to start by taking this value and writing it in exactly the three other places. Square root of 2 over 2 and 1 half. Square root, sorry, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Now, they're not exactly the same because they're in different quadrants. So who can tell me what do I need to change about this particular point? Jaysha, what would you change to make this accurate? I like the numbers, but something's missing, Jaysha. What would it be? Yeah, we would make that. What you guys think of as an x right now, negative. So here's like a really good common question. Where do I put the negative? Do I put it like in front of the square root or in front of the 2? Or It doesn't matter. As long as the negative is out front, it could be in front of the numerator, the denominator, or at the same level as the division sign, as long as there's one negative. So I'm just going to throw that in so everybody can see that. Awesome. Jackie Rodriguez, what would you do about this one? What do we need to do? Put a negative on both. Perfect. Because in quadrant three, cosine and sine, which we're going to learn about, is like the x and the y. x and y down here are both negative. And in quadrant number four, Jesus, what do I need to do? Yeah, make a negative with the one or in front of the one half. Great job. Great job. Okay, you ready? So now we take a piece of yarn, and I have to take a new piece because this is a different length. And I measure along the curve from this point always back to the x-axis, and I measure that. Now there's three other places on this unit circle that have that exact same measurement. So I'd like you to turn to your partner, and in 10 seconds or less, decide where are those three other points. Ready, get set, and go. And so we can see that if I use my fingers and you have large hands, this distance going down to the x-axis or going up to the x-axis is the exact same distance. Distance is always positive. So now I'm going to take this value and I'm going to write it in here. Square root of 2 over 2, 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 square root of 2 over 2. If I stop here, I'm wrong. Miss Gill. What do I need to do at this point? I like the numbers, but there's something missing. Which one? Is it the x value or the y value? That's good. Brandon, what do I need to do about this in the third quadrant? Put a negative in the first one. 
That's correct, but he's still missing something. What else do we need to do? Awesome. And the next one. Isaac, what are we missing on the last one? A negative on what we think of as the Y. And then the very last one, I'm going to use a different color. The very last one is right here. These distances are exactly the same back to the x-axis where we're going up or down. So 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. 1 half, the square root of 3 over 2. 1 half, and the square root of 3 over 2. Go back and change the signs to make it accurate. Today we learned how do we set up using this shortcut, this U method. Again, in pre-calculus, you're going to introduce, um, you're going to introduce using 45, 45 degree triangles and 30, 60, 90 in order to mathematically justify how do we get these points. But today, using the shortcut, we learned how this is the same as these three other. They're kind of like cousins or relatives. The yellows are all the same, right? The only difference is the sign. My pinks are all the same, and my greens are all the same. Tomorrow, we're going to work on these particular points, these particular points, and how do we actually number these dots in terms of two measurements. One's going to be degrees, one's going to be radians. And they're similar. They measure the interior angle the same. It's kind of like how we measure distance in kilometers or miles, or temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius. So two different ways to measure interior angles.